Alright, this is just kind of me giving you guys a quick tutorial, as I mentioned in the previous video I just uploaded, about how to uh, mod your game. Um, kind of the general basics, even I'm not completely considered a quote expert on how to properly do it, because I still make hiccups and mistakes and all that jazz, and there's things that I forget that I have in, and I'll be like, ooh, this new mod looks fun and exciting, let me use it, and then, you know, you add it in, and next thing you know, you got glitches and breakdowns and stuff like that. Because uh, there's three possible problems you can end up with when it comes to modding your game improperly. Um, and that is a total crash, uh, glitches, and miscommunication between mods. And then lastly, two mods just canceling each other out. And then it causes your entire game to basically just fall to shit. Um, and that's what you want to avoid when it comes to modding. So it's like just knowing what you're downloading and all that jazz. So for this instance, I'm just going to be talking about Royal Bloodline, Vampire Perk Tree, Abilities, and more. Um, you have two versions of it. Uh, you have all these optional files, which, you know, it's like, uh, do I want to, you know, keep this out? Do I want to limit myself a bit? Stuff like that. Um, removes perk requirements. I might actually need to download that one. Download with manager. All right, it's going to ask you to launch application. Yes. I guess this is just a quick thing. Yes, do your weird thing where you have to get permission. All right, and here's the Elder Scrolls mod Doom of As you can see, I've got quite a few mods in here, uh, some of which I have deactivated. Um, yes. 468%. How the fuck does that even work? Okay. Uh, create O mod. Yes. Do files with duplicate paths. Vampire optional fix the requirements. Yes. Goddamn. Yes. Yes. There. I'm wondering if that's going to fix that issue I mentioned earlier where I wasn't getting the whatchamacallits, but otherwise I can just uh, download the original again. Cause that's the beauty with downloading with the mod manager is that um, <clears throat> if, you, if something's going on that you don't like, all you got to do is deactivate the mod and bam, your stuff's back to normal for the most part. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, I think that might have been why it wasn't working, because I do remember downloading something from here before. Although it may have been... Eh, I don't know. Anyways, so you have two options here, and you have the uh, expansion with the thing, which is basically just kind of it's stand, uh, standing on its own deal. This one works with um, Better Vampires, which is that mod I showed you where you can... Uh, well, I didn't actually go into detail with it, but I showed you that it was there. Um, and what that does is it allows you to... Basically, immerse yourself in how your vampiric aspects work. Uh, you can make yourself super strong, super weak. Um, you can kind of balance it out between. It's like once you hit, uh, let's say, level 10, then it's like, okay, I'm going to give myself these abilities now. So that's pretty much how I'm going to be doing it when I get back into my uh, Let's Play of Skyrim. And that is just, you know, kind of add a... Excuse me. Add an ability every, like, five levels or something like that. I'll figure it out as I actually get to that. But anyways, more on topic. Um, so you pick one of these two, go with whichever one. If you have better vampires, I'd say go with this one. If you don't, then hey, this one's right here. Um, and then you get a choice between downloading it manually, which is where you're going to you know, click and drag all the files to. Let me pull it up. Uh, basically, you'll just drag them all into your data folder. Um, most mods are already auto-sorted with like the meshes being where they need to be. Um, the scripts and everything else where it needs to be. So most modders are pretty good about that. I've only run into maybe two different mods that that wasn't the case. Um, and then some you'll just get like, um, you know, the the uh, ESMs and the ESP files and then that's it. And then of course your, you know, readmes. Which I would recommend you always read the readmes. Even if you think you know what you're doing, you probably don't. Read the readme, that way you're mistake free 100% of the time. Um, that's just knowing um, most modders try to put what mods are incompatible with theirs. And, you know, if sometimes it's like it's some new mod that just came up, their mod's been up a while, and you're using both of them, and it's conflicting. And it's like, well, what the hell? They didn't know because that mod you installed just came up, and theirs has been up for, you know, years. So it's all about knowing, all right, you know, just trying to figure out if the uh, two mods would conflict with each other. And generally, when you're installing manually, if you drag things over and it says, do you want to overwrite this file? Look at what file you're overwriting because you could be completely fucking up another mod. So that's just one thing to consider. Um, what else? And let's see, other tidbits I can say. 
Oh yeah, if you're installing mods, if you can help it go with the mod manager, whether it's Nexus Mod Manager or the, the Elder Scrolls Mod Manager or the Fallout Mod Managers, go with them because they make installing it a lot easier. They put the files where they need to be. Um, and then I think it's a lot easier just to deactivate it from here or even here if you install it manually. I don't think it really matters which of those two you do in terms of deactivating a mod. But all it does is it turns the mod itself off. But if you have, I think, I think if you have like texture files and stuff like that, those will still be generated. Um, I think I could be wrong there, but um, if you can help it, always go into your folders. And uh, if you're not using a mod, if you're like, I don't want this mod anymore, um, keep a copy of the mod folder that you downloaded, uh, usually in the uh, seven zip files or whatever the hell. Um, and then just look through each of the folders and get rid of the individual files. And then if you know you've installed a mod that um, originally did something that that mod replaced, then you can install your old mod back in, and then boom, it's golden. Like um, a lot of the face texture mods, like let's say you have face texture A and face texture B. You install A because you like it, but then you see B and you like B a lot more. You install B, oh, lo and behold, it doesn't work because it causes crashes and discoloration, or in my case, the hilarious uh, in incident where um, a lot of the female NPCs ended up being just a mouth and a pair of eyes with a wig floating on their. Uh, non-existent head which that was <laughs> scary and hilarious at the same time but uh so you want to get rid of mod b so you remove all of mod b and then you reinstall mod a because uh you know uh when you install b it replaced all of a's files so you want a back so you got to reinstall a and it'll filter everything out on the other hand if the mod's completely the exact same it's just one kind of tweaks them in a different way you can easily just override all the texture files from mod b without any issues um Admittedly, when you're overhauling all the mods you have going and it's like in the middle of a game, like let's say you've done all the white run bits, you've um, done two of the or one of the DLCs and you're like at level 30, if you install something that um, completely changes the gameplay and then remove something that completely changes the gameplay, chances are your save file is going to be unstable as crap. It's probably going to crash and all this other stuff. I hate to say it, but you're probably going to have to start all over again. Um, but that's just if you want, if, I mean, if you want to run the risk of potential crashes, mod conflictions, and other jazz like that, um, then by all means, go ahead and continue on with your game. Um, otherwise, I would say just start from scratch. Just go make a brand spanking new game. That way you're safe and you don't have to worry about too many weird things going on. Um, in my case, there's a couple of mods I'm probably going to take out from mine. Uh, one of them is, and I actually do like them on, I just think I'm generating too much, and it's just of the three that I have going, it's probably the one I want to remove. Um, actually, there was another one I had in, so there's actually between the two now, so actually I might keep it, but um, there was a Civil War mod that I added in that um, I liked it, but it started crashing a lot. Um, but given how it still crashes, despite the fact that I haven't installed that mod after I reinstalled my game, I might actually reinstall it anyway. Because if I'm getting the crashes, regardless if I have the mod or not, I may as well use the fucking mod. Um, but for the most part, I've stabilized my game to a relatively good spot. Um, I've got an autosave mod running that saves everything. But uh, anyways, that's just the gist of modding. Um, well, let me see if I... Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, this one's... Yeah, it's not too big. Let me just download this one manually. Yes, it's yes. yes. Download file, blah, blah, blah. Let me open this sucker. Give it a minute. All right, there you go. So you'll open this up, and it's, you know you got the BSA. It's, I say ESM, I meant BSA. And then um, you have the ESP. Uh, I kind of wish this one had a README, but it doesn't. Otherwise, you can just go to the description. Um, in lieu of a README, they usually have everything in the description. Um, see, he gives you future plans, uh, troubleshooting. The Royal Armor's not showing up. Flight doesn't work. Stuff like that. If you don't have enough available perks, go to your CK of my mind. Blah blah blah. Okay, sorry, I was just reading there. But yeah, I mean, they'll give you the general idea of how to do things, um, how to install it, some issues that other people have had, and other things like that. as well, which means no more followers that spawn midair behind you and take a fatal flip. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I might actually install that. Um, Everlord retexture, Everlord collision fix. So yeah. They'll recommend other mods, but um, generally it's really all about how you install them. And again, I would recommend, this is just me saying it, 
but I would recommend you do it through the mod managers rather than doing it manually. If you can help it, there's some mods, that, you know, it's just a texture file. So the mod manager can't do shit for you. So obviously you're going to have to do it manually, but generally those tend to be really simple on how to install. But uh, yeah, the mod managers, they'll kind of walk you through all the menus and stuff like that. That way you don't end up installing two things that conflict with each other. Like uh, with better vampires, there's a, I think it asks you if you want the Dawn Guard version or the non Dawn Guard, yeah, the non Dawn Guard version, which I went with the Dawn Guard version because I have the DLC installed, so I may as well go with that one. Um, and then it, there's like a patch for the uh, Royal Bloodlines one I just showed you. And then the last one is, I think, for an AoE. I think, I guess the Vampire Lord's uh, Life Drain is an AoE spell, or the better vampires made it one, and I guess that's just to turn it off, which I think I turned it off. I'm not sure. Um, if I didn't, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal, unless I just one-shot things, and okay, yeah, I'm probably going to need to, you know, uh, nerf that down a bit. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Whoop. Let's see, what does this do? Makes it so Serana can fly. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, nice. I got a little picture and everything. All right, so let's see. This mod was put on the back of my request. What the, the? Recommended mods, Royal Bloodline, da da da. All right, so what exactly does this do? Serrano Secrets. What do you do? Description This mod, this simple mod improves Serrano as a follower. As soon as you turn into a vampire lord or werewolf, she will as well. She will also sometimes turn into a bat. To find a strategic position near the player, she'll sometimes bite her enemy if his health is low enough. Watch the video and see how it works. Alright, so yeah, let's try installing this one then. Just for the giggles and shits of it. Oh, and he kept it simple. I shouldn't have done that. No, don't do that. Download with manager. Might as well practice what I preach. And then, yeah, you'll have some eyes will say, you need this, or blah, blah, blah. It's recommended that you have this. Always look for those, or look at those, rather. Make sure you have it, all the requirements. Oh my god, I'm getting real annoyed with that. Import info from Nexus. C. Okay, create OMOD. Serana Secret 9.6 OMOD created successfully. Okay, now we gotta activate this sucker, which there's an activate button. It's like right down here. I know you can't. Actually, let me drag this thing down a wee bit. Yep, there it is, the activate button, and you can see the timer going. And it activates it, and the mod manager will auto-sort it unless you have a different thing, which I'm actually going to move this one up a little bit. Yep, right there. That'll work. All right, so now Serana can turn into a vampire lord when I do. So yay, fun times to be had with her. Uh, let's see, is that everything? Because all I'm really trying to show you guys is how to install. Actually, let me uh, let me see here. Downloads. Um, documents. That's right, it's on my desktop. Where is Beaumod? Beaumod, where are you? I got it sorted by... What the hell, where is it at? Where is it at? What the shit, where'd it go? You know what, let me just do this fucking easy way. Minimize. Minimize. Oh, I feel exposed showing you my desktop. Oh, there it is. Shit. Okay, so let's see. Skyrim. Install later. Yeah, here's all the mods. Better Dark Brotherhood. God damn it, where's one with a fucking readme? Please tell me you have a... Ah, oh, good, you have a readme. So yeah, you'll have like these little readmes here that kind of give you an idea of what this mod does. Confliction, stuff like that. Um, always read them, look over them, stuff like that. Sometimes they give you like useless mod or information, like you know, support my mod and blah blah blah. And you know, it's like, oh, your mod doesn't work, so why should I support you? But uh, generally, the modders are pretty good about communicating, um, at least just off their like description files and everything on how to install the mod uh, recommendations and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of the gist of modding. Um, I know I kind of was all over the place in this video, but that pretty much the general idea is what I was trying to get across. So again, the things to look for is just mods to conflict with each other, making sure you install them the correct way, and then also being able to... Sorry, I just got like a random Facebook thing. Windows 10 apparently has this thing where it has to tell you every time Facebook updates, which is fucking annoying. 
So yeah, just look for mod conflicts, do the or use the readmes, look at the mod description to make sure it's exactly what you want. Um, also look at your other mods to make sure you know you're not getting a conflict where you don't want one. And then also make sure that when you uninstall a mod, uh, generally you're going to need to start a new game. And also, sorry, I was scratching some paint off my external hard drive. I don't know how the hell that got there. But um, you also want to make sure that when you remove mods that you get rid of all the files. That way you don't have, you know, some like deadbeat texture just showing up saying, oh, hey, I'm still here and I'm still working. Um, admittedly, I think some texture files and stuff like that are activated through the ESP, which if it's turned off, it won't activate those. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not exactly a, quote, expert. I'm just better at it than I was, you know, say about, a, actually, I want to say about a month ago because... I kind of just did all this learning within a month while I was in Texas. I'm like, well, I can't do Let's Play, so fuck it. Let's learn how to, you know, use mods and stuff like that, which for the most part, I got it right. Uh, otherwise, I get a little too mod print or mod greedy, and I install too many, and the game just can't handle it, and then it's all downhill from there. So anyway, folks, uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any other things you would like to add, please add them in the comments. That way, people that are like, oh, I don't know what to do, you know. So, you know, say I don't cover something, you guys can add it down below. And it's like somebody watching my video like, well, great. He gave me all this. He gave me this explanation, but it didn't tell me what I wanted to know. Let me scroll down the comments. Oh, there we go. All right. Sweet. Thanks. Luca Blight's viewers. So anyway, folks, uh, that's just a wow. This actually was a lot longer than I thought it would be, but I tend to ramble in my videos. So, you know, forgive me. But anyway, folks, this is how to somewhat mod your game. And I've been Luca Blight and I will see you all for whatever video I upload next.